Ahoy there, Captain Benzie here, coming at you with another episode of the Catskull Academy, the series that aims to give you the very best start possible in EVE Echoes. Today we're going to be talking about the trainer destroyers that you get as a reward for completing Advanced Tutorial 4, which one of these you might want to choose, how you'll fit it, and what kind of crazy shenanigans you can get up to using it. Now of course if you do enjoy this video let me know by hitting like on it, subscribe to the channel for all things Eve Echoes, and ding that notification bell so that you know when the next video goes live. Come find me on the social medias you see along the bottom of your screen now, I love chatting with you guys and especially come join the Catskull Cartel Discord down there, that's a great way to get in contact with a load of us and talk about all kinds of things Eve Echoes. If you want to go the extra mile to help support this channel you can do so by coming and finding us on Patreon, again details at the bottom of the screen now. I do make these videos entirely on my phone so every pledge really does help make this, you know, make, uh, keep this all going. So thank you all so much. Now, before we talk about the destroyers as well, I do just need to make a very important public service announcement, and that is, ultimately, I am super humbled by the amount of support I get from you guys as I fly through places like Jita and Masper, or the Ahoy there messages. That's really, really cool, and I love it so much. However, please do not come out to Nullsec to try and find me. The corporation I run, the Catskull Cartel, operates on a not blue, shoot instantly policy. That means if you are not a member of the corporation or one of the allied corporations to us, you will be shot and destroyed instantly, so please don't come down here. Anyway, that all said and done, let's talk about those destroyers. So, we've mentioned the advanced tutorials before in previous videos. If you don't know what they are, do go and watch the first one of getting started in New Eden, um, of how to survive your first day in Eve Echoes. But once you have completed advanced tutorial 4 here, you will see that you have an option at the bottom for which reward you would want to claim. Now, of course, you do need to be docked at a station to claim these rewards, and I do recommend docking at a station that is going to be home. Don't just stop at any random station and do this, otherwise you're going to have a random destroyer parked somewhere that you're going to need to find a way to get it back. Now, you get an option. You get an option of either the Dragoon Trainer, which, uh, trainer, which is an, a Mar ship, a Mar drone ship, the Corax Trainer, which is a Kaldari missile ship, the Algos Trainer, which is a Galente drone ship, again, and the Talwar Trainer, which is a Minmatar missile ship. So basically, you've got the Talwar or the Corax for uh, missiles, and you've got the Algos and the Dragoon there for drones. Now, I will cover drones in a future video. I know a lot of you have been asking about that. Um, obviously, it's not a heavy weapon specialization for me. It's something that I will train into later on, and I will cover it properly then when I can get my hands on something. I've just got other things that are slightly higher up the priority list, but that is coming. So for today, we are going to ignore the Algos, and we are going to ignore the Dragoon. That said, if you are big on your drones and you want to have a look at how you might want to fit an Algos, there is a video back from the OBT, the Open Beta Test, that does talk about the Algos quite a bit. Um, that it is slightly different in the fact that the drone tubes are now mids rather than highs um, but the basics are all there there's also the Tristan video that will give you a basic idea of drones in their current state what I'm going to suggest though is that you'd want to go for either the Corax trainer or for the Talwar trainer these are both missile ships and if you've been watching any of my content you'll have seen things like the Kestrel video where I show about missile kiting in a Kestrel obviously the Talwar and the Corax are both capable of doing that if we look at the statistics of these two ships here, you can see they're both destroyers, of course. They are three high slots, one mid slot, and three lows, plus two of each of the rigs for the Talwar. And if we go across to the Korax, you'll see it is exactly the same. Three high, one mid, three low, and then two of each of the rigs. Actually, for their statistics, their roll bonuses are fairly similar as well. The Corax Trainer and the Talwar Trainer both get a 25% increase to missile torpedo velocity, which also increases the range of any missiles and torpedoes that you're using, which is an important part of kiting. Then you get the differences down here. The Corax Trainer, for every uh, every point, every level you have in small missile torpedo operation, will give you a 6% increase to small missile torpedo damage. That's ultimately a 30% at maximum. Um, and Destroyer Command bonus will give you plus 5% stasis web of fire optimal range and plus 5% energy Nosferatu. That's great if you want... The Corex Trainer for me is great if you want to go brawling. This is gr a great little torpedo ship. Get up close and personal, orbit at a fairly short range, whack them with the small missiles or torpedoes, small, small torpedoes, best, their best of all there, um, with a stasis web of fire and an energy Nosferatu so that you are draining their energy and their capacitor and you are webbing them down into position. 
Now, the Talwar Trainer, on the other hand, again, it still gets that 6% small missile torpedo damage, so it gets the same bonuses there, but it gets additional to uh, a warp drive signature radius penalty and a uh, increase for stasis web of fire optimal range. This means this is better at a longer distance because it can actually use those web of fires at a further range to slow things down, and it can use a warp drive with... Uh, uh, to keep at range without suffering so much the penalty for signature radius. If you're not sure what I mean by signature radius penalty and all that kind of thing, go watch the video on how missiles work. It explains it all there. Curiously as well, the Talwar does have the Destroyer Command bonus of 6% small cannon damage. That means in an absolute worst case scenario, if you do happen to run out of missiles, um, like you haven't got any decent missiles, you can put cannons on here. And at 5 le uh, levels of Destroyer Command, that's an additional 30% small cannon damage, which actually makes it a pretty solid cannon ship, although it does th the roll bonus there does nothing in that case. This should be fit as a missile ship. Now, for the purposes of this video, because of course I'm a Minmatar player, yes, I went for the uh, for the Talwar Trainer. So, if we go into our inventory, if you've selected the uh, particular ship, you'll find it here in the ship hangar. There it is, the Talwar Trainer. We are going to set that to active now. And there we go, one Talwar Trainer, all assembled and ready for fitting. So, let's do that. Let's jump into the fitting menu and have a look at what we need. So again, here you can see there are three high slots, one mid slot, and three low slots. Some people have asked, basically, for a quick explanation of what these are. High slots are weapon systems, and that can be literal weapon systems like missiles or turrets, or it can be a sort of theoretical you shoot it at someone else, like remote armor repairs or remote shield boosters. The mid slots are sub weapons, things like uh, tackling, um, warps, uh, warp scramblers, disruptors, webs, that kind of thing. Energy Nosferatus and neutralizers, sort of sub weapons. Drones also come under the mid slots, but of course you do need to have a drone tube for drones, which this ship doesn't have. And low slots are then, of course, the things that you use for uh, sort of buffing your ship. Things like afterburners and micro warp drives uh, for propulsion. Or things like tracking computers, um, shield generators and boosters, that kind of thing, all fit into the lows. Anyway, if we actually have a look at the ship itself, let's open the defense first of all. You can see that it has an effective hit points, or EHP, of 2756. Of that 2756, 869 are shield, 774 are armor, and 685 are structure. Now, people have asked as well, how do you know if it's a shield tank or an armor tank? Ultimately, it's whichever of these two stats is highest. Because if you're going for, say, a shield tank and you put armor repairers on, it's going to take a while to go through that shield, and then you've just got a small health bar with the armor that you're trying to keep topped up there. Whereas an armor tank, obviously, again, if you're trying to prop the shield up, you're trying to prop up a small health bar rather than propping up the big one, which just reacts better. I will do a video on actual tanking um, at a future date. But suffice it to say that because the Talvor trainer here has more shield hit points, than it does armor, this should be sh a shield fit. So first of all, let's go straight in and look at that in the low slots here. Now I'm going to put on here a Mark III small shield booster. Some people prefer extenders, I personally prefer boosters, just because, especially on something like a kiter here, I can take a little bit of damage and then sort of boost the shields back up to repair that at range. Now, because we're kiting, we're going to want to be able to keep at range. Um, so that's going to be a Mark III small afterburner that I put on there, although I could put the Mark V on there. I've got other uh, plans for that Mark V. I'm going to put the Mark III afterburner on here just so that I can zip away. If I warp into an anomaly a little bit too close to someone, I can set my trajectory to move away from them, activate that afterburner, and zip away into the distance. The idea is that I want to keep at my maximum range. Um, it should put me out of range of other people's guns, which leads us one mid slot, uh, one low slot available. Now, if we scroll down here, you'll see I do have a Mark V ballistic control system. And what this essentially does is it boosts your missiles, as you kind of guess from the name. It gives you a damage bonus when it's activated, um, and it means that your, uh, your missile launchers do actually activate that little bit faster. So, we're going to fit one of these now. That will increase the damage that my missiles do. Now, speaking of missiles, if we then move to the high slots, we've got a couple of different options here. I'm going to go for these Mark V small missile launchers here. Now, the reason I'm going for small missile launchers rather than small torpedo launchers is because of that range. Again, if you've watched the Kestrel Kiting video, you should understand that it's that range we're looking at, 18.75 kilometers. I've got three of the Mark Vs here. But of course, Mark 3s or even Mark 1s will do just as well. The whole reason for me to have Mark 5s rather than Mark 3s is simply time to kill. The Mark 3s or Mark 1s will do the job amply, um, they just will take longer to do so. 
So there we go. If we now go to a fence, you can see that's 558.71 DPS as standard there from those three fittings. Mark 5 missile, Mark 5 small missile, Mark 5 small missile. Now, if we were to take off the ballistic control system, you'll see that that does actually go up because I've got a bit of lag. Um, that would go down normally. If I put the Mark V ballistic control system back on, that should increase there. So 88.07. You see 81 was the standard DPS. Sorry, I had a little bit of lag there. 81.07 standard DPS from those three launches. Put the missile, uh, the ballistic control system on. That takes us up to 88.07. That is with skills. You might not reach that instantly if you're not skilled into missiles. Finally, for that mid-slot, again, I've got a couple of options here. Small energy Nosferatu's not really great because they've got really short range here, um, about four to eight kilometers range. I want to be as maximum range as I can. Same with the Stasis Web of Fire. I could go for one of these. Um, you can see six kilometers is the average here. If you've got a Mark III or Mark V that's a little bit longer, that can be worth going for. Again, I don't have one available um, as mine are fitted to other ships at the moment. But you might want to put a web of fire in there just in case anyone gets close. You can then shut them down and move them further away. Now, if you are using the Talwar trainer as well, um, do note that obviously a part of our rewards, I think it was today. Yep, here we are. Were the, if on day three, here we are with these weapon rig safes. If you've got those weapon rig safes, open them up as missile rig safes, and I would probably go for something to the effect of um, the ones that give you additional flight time and flight speed, because those two rigs will allow your Talwar to shoot that little bit further. Again, all about that range. If we go back into the fitting, I had to go for the cannon ones for other ships, but again, you can see they would just go here into these two power grid rig slots down here. I've got the cannon ones there, you can see. Um, but you'd put those missile fittings in in there and just get yourself that little bit of extra range. Now as well, if you are currently on an Omega account, you will have had the choice of various different skins. If you go into the uh, the skins here, you tap that little icon in the bottom left, just to showcase that again if I come back out, it's this little icon here in the bottom left. We activate that, it'll take you through to the page. You can then have a look at what the different skins look like actually on the ships themselves. And there we are. There is the Exoplanets Hunter, the one that I got there. Oh, someone's donated one isk. Very kind. Um, Talwar Trainer, there we go. If I now come out, it won't show it on the fitting page because it has a little bit of a delay. But if I close this down, there it is, the Exoplanet Hunter Talwar there. Now, as I said, the aim of this particular ship is to go kiting. You want to keep your range, keep firing those missiles at distance, and with that fit, I promise you, you can do some very high-tier anomalies. I was out in high-security space doing encounters earlier, and I am currently, if I go into the encounter menu, you'll see I'm doing these uh, sort of the, the higher-tier ones, the tier, tier 4 plus ones, if I refresh those here these ones and um, you can see things like marketing strategy advanced those earn like 150,000 isk it recommends a tier 5 destroyer but because you're staying at range and not getting shot you can go with something like the Tal War destroyer and do those quite comfortably Anyway, folks, I'm not going to showcase me actually going out and doing a particular anomaly simply because there are none anywhere nearby that are of appropriate level, so it's not really showing anything. To understand how kiting works with missiles, do go watch the Kestrel kiting video. There should be a link on screen now and in the description below. That will showcase in better detail than I can showcase here how to actually... Uh, perform kiting with uh, with missiles just to give you a basic idea of how that works there's also a caracal missile uh, video on here as well that will showcase that same thing anyway folks again thank you ever so much for watching i do hope this is useful let me know what topics you want me to cover in future videos down below in the comment section um, and of course again do say hi if you see me in high security but don't come hunting for me down in null sec you will get shot anyway folks thank you ever so much for watching happy sailing and see you in new eden